Welcome back, everyone. In this morning's health news, strokes. We're talking about strokes. They are the leading cause of disability and can turn into things like depression, poor memory, visual impairment, and that's not even the worst of it. What's scary is a lot of people are having silent strokes and don't even know it, but there are steps you can take to help prevent them. So that's why this morning we're talking about the lesser known ways with Dr. Ken Redcross, who's founder of the Red Cross Concierge. Thanks for being here this Thank morning. Thank you for having me again, Tess. And this is a scary trend for sure, isn't it? It is. A personal experience, my 47 year old cousin suffered a stroke. She's been in the hospital, just got out of it. I see you though for nearly two weeks with some hopefully not permanent problems. Exactly, and she is very blessed and it seems like she probably got medical care early, which mm -hmm. is the key whenever we're talking about strokes. So as we talk about some of these lesser known ways to prevent and recovery, let's talk about some of the things that actually cause these strokes. So one of them is blood pressure. You cannot get away from talking about strokes without bringing blood pressure in. In fact, if you do have hypertension, you're six times more likely to wow. potentially have a stroke. So keeping that under control is so important. Absolutely. I have this wireless blood pressure monitor to show that this can be fun monitoring your blood pressure. You can actually send the data to your doctor even. Oh, wow. So that's a okay. big deal. So leverage technology. The other thing we need to talk about is there is a substance in our body. It's fascinating. It's called citicoline. Now, citicoline is important for two reasons. What Number is one, it? exactly. It helps with brain energy metabolism. Okay. So the brain is only 2% of our body weight, but it takes almost 70% of our energy. So it's important that you have citicoline on board. It's not new. It actually is used in Europe right now as a prescription medication for dementia and Parkinson's. But the key is this. There is actually a medical food called Serenex. Okay. Now, I mentioned Serenex in particular because it has a specific form of citicoline that was shown in human clinical trials to actually help with the prevention and the recovery when there is brain injury wow. damage. So that's huge. So you say medical food. So this is obviously something that you don't need with a prescription. Is that right? Is no. this something over the counter? This is over the counter now. Over in Europe, like I said, it's a mm -hmm. prescription, which is awesome. And also at their website, serenex.com, okay. you can actually go out as a consumer and read them for yourself. That's huge. Whenever you're talking about something for your brain, sure. you want to have data. Okay. The other thing you're going to see here, Tess, you're never going to get away from a discussion with me and not talk about food. Food. Um, the because right I always things to Exactly. Because right? food is medicine. And so some of the things I have here, I just saw this report this morning also that I just read. Coffee. Coffee sometimes gets a bad rap, but in this case for stroke, one cup of coffee a day showed that it was actually beneficial. Probably because of helping and preventing on the, strokes well, specifically? Yes, probably because of the fact you're going to get a little bit less inflammation and it may also kind of reverse that insulin resistance that we sometimes can get. Okay, okay. But you see, I have garlic. A lot of people We've heard love about garlic, garlic yeah. and you know that's very important as far as for blood pressure. I also have this olive oil, which helps with cholesterol, which can also be a risk factor when we're talking about stroke. I also included these yams over here, these sweet potatoes, because they are loaded with potassium. Mm -hmm. And potassium has this kind of cool interplay with sodium because sodium helps to increase our blood pressure. And last but not least, I brought my alarm clock. I know, clock. I'm trying to figure out, I was, I, I, I was talking to you about the other things and I could see how they could relate to it, but what is the deal with the alarm clock? How does that involve our blood pressure and eventually possibility of stroke? Well, because there was a study that was done, and I think this was a study out of Great Britain that showed that when we get too much sleep tests, we are at increased risk, wow. probably for two reasons. Number one, probably not getting as much activity if you're able to sleep 10 hours okay. a day. So that's important. The second thing you want to think about is that if you're getting that kind of sleep, maybe you have obstructive sleep apnea, which is a ah. Another risk factor for stroke. Okay. So some things we want to keep in mind. So get up and out of bed and exercise, but mm -hmm. don't keep hitting that snooze button. So, okay. I think I remember reading that too. So it's interesting. And we can always add the coffee. These are things that you can do right now. Make these simple changes. Add these little things to help prevent the stroke. What is the number one thing you want people to look out for that they should immediately call the doctor? All right. So the important thing for us is that you want to make sure that if you have any of these symptoms, if you have a facial droop, Okay. If you realize you have some weakness of your arm or of your leg, that is not normal, guys. The other thing you also want to keep in mind, if your speech is ever slurred, that is also a problem. And as we're talking about all these things for these silent strokes, you want to make sure that you get medical care as early as possible. Because it can make the difference it can in, make a in huge saving difference. your life. Dr. Red Cross, always, always great information. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tess. We're going to put all the information on azfamily.com. Javi? Thank you.